old West Germany made Framus acoustic, which is kind of cool. Um, it's in not really good shape. I think I can possibly get the neck back where it needs to be because it is a bolt on. We'll see, but that was a cool little find. I only paid 30 bucks for it because of the shape it's in. But either way, if it ends up being a part out, that's a couple hundred bucks. So, ah, so is the life of a guitar hustler. Framus. Still see the name there. You can see the tag stamp for coming into the States, which is cool that it's still stuck on it. There's the body, but the problem is the string action. It's like a foot off the fretboard, but it's a bolt on neck, and the neck is also jutted forward, so the intonation's completely off. But we're going to do something with this and make this a playable guitar. Believe it or not, it's got a crack in the front. Bridge is kind of in the wrong spot. It needs to scoot back. Um, nice uh, carved top in the back. Made in West Germany. Very cool. Let's get started. Get rid of the string. Take some bolts off. Ooh, long bolts. Oh, wow, check those Made in Germany. Well, this Framus has some major league problems. As you can see, the neck had moved all the way up to that brace. And what was supporting it, as you can see, look at there, was this very thin piece of wood right here. And it had moved this far forward because the neck was setting up against that. Even with the bolts in it, and the bolts are straight. So... What that tells me is this neck has never been in the right place because it, if you put it back to its factory spot, which you can see, you can see where the neck, this piece right here, very thin piece, had broke off and it sat right in the front of there and you can see where the, exactly where this neck sat and put it right there and as you can see that is not quite against that wood but watch this as you can see this is where it sat from the factory i got it just at that point right there from the first or the zero fret it's one and three eighths that's a 24 and three quarter 12 and 3 eighths. That's a 24 and 3 quarter scale. Well, 12 and 3 eighths from the first fret from the nut to the 12th fret. And then, as you can see here, 
right on that. That's 12 inches exactly. So we're three eighths of an inch too far forward that way from its factory setting. This guitar never played right, never tuned. If you made a chord, it never sounded right because it was in the wrong place and it is a good three eighths of an inch off. So if you move it, I'll kind of eyeball it, three eighths of an inch back, you can see that, see that gap in between where it should set and where it did set, that it did set all the way forward. Three eighths of an inch off, I eyeballed that. So this should be now from the 12th fret, 12 and three eighths, just like it is right now. So three eighths of an inch. So in order to fix this, let me spin this around. I've got to not only add this little sliver of wood, I'm not going to just this thickness, that plus another three eighths to move this neck forward because it came to 12. It was three eighths off and that will not tune right. So what I'm gonna do to fix this is cut off a three eighths piece of wood, glue it here. I'm gonna glue this piece that broke off on, the only piece that was supporting it in the wrong spot. And I'm gonna glue it, of course, to the uh, in the right spot all the way back and I'll glue it to the to the new piece also. And then the neck will set in the right spot. Well, the neck had curved up because it was, because it had given right in here and this was pushing. So the only way to fix it would be, we're gonna have to scab something also up underneath it to bring the neck to tilt back, all right? These holes right here, that's factory holes. It's the only holes that have been drilled in it are in the wrong place. So as the neck pulls out, these are going to be three eighths off, but I'm going to redrill it all the way through with these big giant long screws. I will, uh, I will uh, re actually redrill them, but the holes are going to be in a completely different place and this thing will play, but the neck's going to actually be out from the body instead of sitting here, it's going to be sitting three eighths of an inch up. And you're gonna be able to see the repair, can't hide it. I can cover it the best I can, get it as close as possible, but that repair is not gonna be nice, nice looking. Makes you wonder, hmm, how far should I go with this? Well, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't see this. As you can see, the Framus, this is a Framus Texan 5156 or something like that. But you can see 4, 250, 382. These are for sale. So you can say it's in the four. I, you know, like I, I don't fix guitars. I don't dive deep into a guitar unless it's worth over $200. And this one. And you go to the Reverb Solds. And these are the actual sold text. And see the mustache bridge. I mean, there's one that's got the same problem. This one does 500 bucks. There is one that went for 99. That had to be a joke. Uh, but they are bringing, these are solds. So these are 425, 395, 380. Damn it. I was hoping that this thing was worth a hundred bucks and I could just set it aside or part it out or, or whatever but it seems like it is over the $200 range. So damn it, I gotta fix it. Like uh, three eighths. I like orange better than blue. These are the same size. What we're gonna do is uh, cut this dowel rod. I'm gonna put two pieces, stack them up there. I'll sand them down to have it the exact height. Then I'm going to glue this piece on top of it. And for the neck pocket, this piece that broke off initially, it will be moved back three eighths of an inch towards the headstock and everything should be smooth and everything will be intonated. And that's what I'm about to do. Looks like.
Like a glove. Perfect. That's what you call skill. Now we were off exactly three eighths of an inch and that's what these measure is three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to stack them and I'm gonna have to sand one side down to actually get it to uh, not fit up there too tall. Right now it's okay. I can test it and measure and make sure we're gonna be within the marker there. Cause that's going to butt right up next to it. Then need to measure from the 12th fret. To the bridge and make sure we're coming in because it is not adjustable. We are at, wow, it's almost dead on. Let's see how much sanding we're gonna have to do. It's gonna sit right up next to it. We want the high E side for this to come up exactly 12 and 3 eighths. And my goodness, it is somehow let me double check it with the put my eyeballs on here. I'm not going to film the full 30 minutes that this is going to probably take me to to get her down. Uh, I've already got this one down quite a bit to the right height, so I think we're there. Yeah, it's smooth straight across now. So now all I have to worry about is the width. Of these two together so I'm just going Use this glue, or use this glue. We'll make the repair take 24 to 48 hours because I would have to glue this in stages. This would make the repair take 20 minutes, two days, 20 minutes. that decision all right let's do this little repair first off a little bit of sandpaper not we're not we're just gonna bump it a little you leave some of the grit on there it's not even gonna hurt a little sawdust yeah doesn't take a lot just gotta bump it Cool thing about super glue is it's gonna be stuck on there for a very short period of time in drying and everything else. Make sure that's the right. Yep, that's how it was gonna go. So that's the thin side, that's the thin side, and away we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Set it right in the middle before it adheres. We give a little bead across there. Boo, be do, boo. Watch her drip down. Yeah, yeah, I gotta love that super glue. It's hard to clamp something to the round side of that. 
Well, it's already set up. Cruise it, you lose it. Got a little piece of whatever wanting to want to join it down here. Clamps are great and all that, but I'm not holding this for 20 minutes, but I also have an accelerator, which is cool. I use my accelerator a lot on uh, super glue. And you can spend money and go buy an accelerator if you want to, or a better accelerator is that it does the same thing. That's what an accelerator is. Well, they mix other crap with it too, but here we go. Little drippage there. All right, here we go. About to accelerate the process. That did it. You also end up with a little super glue and stuff. But alcohol speeds up the drying process very quickly. Because when it dries, super glue is done. Uh, we got some super glue squeezing out there. Let's get it roll. Yeah, get that stuff drying out. Because it ain't going to move from this position ever. As the super glue dries, we will be there. This is also strengthening this neck pocket, which is very cool. Needs it, Need, needed strengthening. Of course, we're gonna have a piece of sandpaper, I mean, a uh, super glue that dried right in the way. Uh, scrape it off. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but dang. Hang a car from it now, it wouldn't it would hold. The rest of the guitar would disintegrate, but that would stay together. Okay. Good, good, good. We are there. Alright, next thing is this has already been bumped with sandpaper. So is that, so no need to do that. Let's double check this and make sure that we're still, everything is still copacetic. Looks like it is, let's see, is that straight across? Ooh, dang, got the wrong side up. Don't know. Uh, nope, the other way. Well, that happens sometimes. Ha. Okay. Let's uh, do a little adjusting. This is real time fixing. harder on one side than the other this looks like we've got a little a little bit of a high spot there that feels correct let's see how we sitting now that feels right just this thing is it sitting all right ah there we go there's a problem it's sitting on that this has some uh, glue on the back 
Let's shave it off here. That was a problem. That little bit of glue. There we go. Now we're straight across. Amen. All right. Okay. Now, just apply a little super glueage. I'll drip a little down on that. Okay. I don't want to put too much, but I want to make sure it's all on there. All right. Now, hit the clampage on here, which is my hands. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we still going? Oh, eight minutes. Let's see. How long is this repair taking? So far, eight minutes, almost nine minutes. This part, anyway. A ah, little super glue on your fingers. Make sure you don't super glue yourself to this, to your project. Constantly check your fingers. Make sure you're not taking skin off as you move them because it will sure stick to you. Faux show. All right. Now we use a little accelerator. Let's see if we got any. Eh. Let's see. Do a little. think that's ever gonna go anywhere okay I think it's good slide high spot right there let me knock that off I don't know if you can see what I'm doing but I'm shaving a little bit to make this make sure this goes straight across yeah because we're just a hair off right there came out a little high that seems there's a little in the center that's sticking up too. Let's see. Let's get her shaved. All right. Right along there. Feels straight across. One thing about it, you gotta get you want everything to lay completely flat. I think we're good. Just shave just a hair off. That feels perfect. So we got to glue this on next, and we're just going to get it as straight as possible. Look at there. Okay. Now we're cooking the gas. Okay. Got this glued on. This looks. Oof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like it will. It will work. I 
generally, before I bolt this neck on, I'm going to run a bead of super glue down through these sections just to make sure that no more cracking happens. Less of a chance with it working kind of as a unit instead of just. Okay, so. I think we're moving up on the 20 total minute mark of this repair. It seems like it's on there. Okay, can't really put an accelerant on it. I don't want it to react to that lacquer. Super glue also reacts to uh, lacquer, not like poly. Poly, it la you know, poly laughs at super glue. It works. So. You can shine super glue, oddly enough, the clear. But through shrinkage and everything, I think I think we're good in the neck pocket. I think uh, I have still a little bit of moisture there. But let's shut this off, and I gotta redrill this neck next. Okay. I'm just holding this neck here. I hold it in the right place. I hope y'all can see this. And I had to basically put that drill bit all the way in there because it's so far down. See where we're hitting. Oh yeah, we got a little bit of room. Okay, we're all the way up. Right in the center. Okay, that was good. Okay. Still the same. Nothing moves. Battery's going dead on the drill. There we go. So, pilot holes are drilled. Wow. seem to be about the same. That's how far down we're going. Not very far. These screws do not poke too far away from there. Uh, upon closer inspection and value and all that, um, I was going to run some dowels in here, but I noticed if you look, I bolted this thing up and everything seen, everything was very sturdy. The neck was very tight. So all I'm going to do with these extra holes is just fill them. They were far enough apart to where it didn't interfere. Nothing broke up under there. And this is a laminate neck, so it's super strong in between there. So I'm not going to waste a lot of a lot of time and energy on this particular guitar. It value probably tops out somewhere around um, 400 ish, 450 maybe. But I'm just going to mix up some this stuff that. It, I use super glue and replace of, you know, most of the time. But this stuff does make great wood filler. So I'm going to make my little paste here and then just stuff the holes with it.
and it should be just fine. I'm going to have to shim the nag about that much, which is about a millimeter and a half, maybe, well, maybe two millimeters, maybe two millimeters to tilt, to get it to tilt just right into there. It looks like about two millimeters. I use picks. I just cut up picks and then glue them together and I'll set it in here with a little daub of uh, super glue. But I'll glue them together first. But one thing I wanted to do is get this thing before super glue. Again, I love my super glue. But before super glue, I like to take my shims and the shims I'm going to use and go ahead and, you know, give them a little bit of rough up so the super glue will stick. This might be one of those things where I got to, yeah. Drag it across it. Can't really get a grip on it, it's too thin. Ah, oh, it's doing my fingernails for me. Do a little scratchy scratch. Hmm, that's tough. I'm gonna just flip it around. Same thing here. Just get them scratched up so they'll stick good. Super glue's probably going to stick just fine, but just to be safe, this is, yes, three picks to get the neck low enough after it's been shimmed. All right, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, okay. All right, that's it right there. And now, the easy part, naturally, is to, I'm going to glue these together. Let me take, let me uh, square that off a little better. Make sure there's no burrs. We don't want it sticking up on one part. But I like to super glue my shims together to themselves. Just a little dab. Doesn't have to be a major glue up or anything. And they stick not instantly, but pretty close. Doesn't take them long. And this one, I need to go to, I'm gonna stick it. Stick it up against. There we go. But this one, they're already stuck. Doesn't take much. Just a little bit of glue. And away we go. Right there. Make sure there's no pointiness because we want the flat edge to sit up. So we don't want this to move. Take this, we already know it sets right. You don't want to use a lot of glue. I mean, we're talking about just a touch on one side. That's it, just about where it's gonna sit, right there. And just set it right in the middle, or as close to the middle as you can get. You want it in the middle. So that is nothing but, well, huh. I need a little bit. I don't think it's touching that glue. I don't want it permanently there. I wanted you to be able to pop it off if somebody wants to remove this shim and use a different material, but I just like super glue. And I know that plastic will stick to just about anything. I want it to stay there. So I'll just hold it here for a second. I hope you can see what I'm doing. 
I want it up against that. I do not want this shim to ever move. And if somebody unbolts this neck, I don't want the shim to fall out because then they'll have to resize everything. And I've already sized this up and stuck the bolts in. But let me go up a little bit. All right. All right. It's being a little stingy on the bonding process there. That's all right. Okay, we got no glue running anywhere. Huh, it's just being a little shitty. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Fucker. Uh, anyway, we'll set that right there. We know it's good where it sets, and I'm pretty sure Let's see. I don't know if this is. There we go. Yeah, see, it's bite. It's biting in there really really good so we got plenty of screw there that's going to be in on the neck I would normally use my drill on this but I want to do it by hand so I can yeah we got to make sure this sucker tightens up good like tight tight we don't want it moving Feel it going right in the right. The holes lined up good. The neck is nice and square. This part may have been sped up. I'll cut in and out what I'm saying when I have to. I'm gonna do a little uh, editing. Pretty tight. Get it pretty doggone tight. How tight it sat in there. Now the front, you know, you can see the see the repair. It's not bad, but it can it can be seen especially in the light hey thanks guys thanks for coming out tonight thanks to george's majestic for having us out here tonight we hope to see you guys again real soon thanks for coming out thanks guys we we'll see you next time
came together great. Um, shocked. Got the action just laying on the fretboard almost. It's almost too low. I had to raise it up just a hair. <sighs> Can't believe the neck is straight. Wow. With all the tension on it. I got it a half step down. It's probably the best it's ever said, but I know you, the camera's not going to pick this up, but it is loud. It's so freaking loud. 60, 70 year old wood that's been sitting there and this thing probably hadn't been playable for the last 30 years, I would say, because the intonation was just way out of whack. Now it's been playing quite a bit, but I mean, this neck was <clears throat> way tilted up. I've got it, uh, got it setting just right in the pocket. I blocked it up here. So the new heel, it comes up to a new heel that was actually broken. Now the, uh, the rosette is broken, you know, the, the round part, uh, right up in here, but I glued it back on. It wasn't stabilizing anything anyway. The neck didn't, didn't use that, but it ended up crushing into it once it pulled forward, once everything broke up in there. But I got it all fixed, and she is a player, and she is, I mean, for a beat-up 60-year-old guitar... Wow, what projection, huh? But, uh, yeah, i get her, get her up for sale on the old interwebs here shortly. But, hey, proud of the, proud of how she came out. Only a little crack there, but not too bad. Um, all the, it seems like everything is still there. The top, as far as any humping, we don't have any humping. But it's just, it got dry at one time or another, and probably this kept, this front had one crack all the way down, right in the middle, right in the seam. So, that's not too bad. But she had a little flex on her, and we got her flexed right back to where she's supposed to be. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Hit that uh, notification bell. <laughs>
Everything that means something to you. 